classical mythology, Cupid, Latin for Cupido, meaning desire, is the god of desire, erotic love, attraction, and affection. He is often portrayed as the son of the love goddess Venus and the war god Mars. He is also known in Latin as Amor, meaning love. His Greek counterpart is Eros. Although Eros is generally portrayed as a slender, winged youth in classical Greek art, during the Hellenistic period he was increasingly portrayed as a chubby boy. During this time, his iconography, iconography, <laughs> sorry, his iconography acquired the bow and arrow that represent his source of power. A person or even a deity who is shot by Cupid's arrow is filled with uncontrollable desire. In myths, Cupid is a minor character who serves mostly to set the plot in motion. He is a main character only in the tale of Cupid the Psyche. When wounded by his own weapons, he experiences the ordeal of love. Although other extended stories are not told about him, his tradition is rich in poetic themes and visual scenarios, such as Love Conquers All and the Retaliatory Punishment or Torture of Cupid. In art, Cupid often appears in multiples as the Amores or Amorini in the later terminology of art history, the equivalent of the Greek Erates. Cupids are a frequent motif of both Roman art and later Western art of the classical tradition. In the 15th century, the iconography of Cupid starts to become indistinguishable from the puto, or puto, I'm not really sure. It's spelled P-U-T-T-O. Cupid continued to be a popular figure in the Middle Ages when under Christian influence he often had, to had a dual nature as heavenly and earthly love. In the Renaissance, a renewed interest in classical philosophy endowed him with complex allegorical meanings. In contemporary popular culture, Cupid is shown drawing his bow to inspire romantic love, often as an icon of Valentine's Day. The Romans reinterpreted myths and concepts pertaining to the Greek Eros for Cupid in their own literature and art, and medieval and Renaissance mythographers conflate the two freely. In the Greek tradition, Eros had a dual, contradictory genealogy. He was among the primordial gods who came into existence asexually. After his generation, deities were begotten through male-female unions. 
in Hesiod's Theogony, only Chaos and Gaia are older. Before the existence of gender dichotomy, Eros functioned by causing entities to separate from themselves that which they are already contained. At the same time, the Eros, who was pictured as a boy or slim youth, was regarded as the child of a divine couple. The identity of whom varied by source. The influential Renaissance mythographer Natalie Conti began his chapter. Oh, that was probably Natale Conti began his chapter on Cupid slash Eros by declaring the, that the Greek themselves were unsure about his parentage. Heaven and Earth, Ares and Aphrodite, Night and Aether, or Strife and Zephyr. The Greek traveler, writer Basanius, he notes, contradicts himself by saying at one point that Eros welcomed Aphrodite into the world and at another that Eros was the son of Aphrodite and the youngest of the gods. In Latin literature, Cupid is usually treated as the son of Venus without reference to a father. Seneca says that Vulcan, as the husband of Venus, is the father of Cupid. Cicero, however, says that there were three Cupids, as well as three Venuses. The first Cupid was the son of Mercury and Diana, the second of Mercury and the second Venus, and the third of Mars and the third Venus. This last cupid was the equivalent of Anteros, Counterlobe, one of the Eros, the gods who embody aspects of love. The multiple cupids frolicking in art are the decorative manifestation of these proliferating loves and desires. During the English Renaissance, Christopher Marlowe wrote of 10,000 cupids in Ben Johnson's wedding mask Hymenae. A thousand several colored loves hop about the nuptial room. In the later classical tradition, Cupid is most often regarded as the son of Venus and Mars, whose love affair represented an allegory of love and war. The duality between the primordial and the sexually conceived Eros accommodated philosophical concepts of heavenly and earthly love even in the Christian era. Cupid is winged, allegedly, because lovers are flighty and likely to change their minds, and boyish because love is irrational. His symbols are the arrow and torch, because love wounds and inflate, inflames the heart. These attributes and their interpretation were established by late antiquity 
as summarized by Isidore of Seville in his Etymologie. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I'll spell it for you. E T Y M O L O G I A E. Cupid is also sometimes depicted blindfolded and described as blind. Not so much in the sense of sightless, since the sight of the beloved can be a spur to love. As blinded, or as blinkered, sorry, as blinkered and arbitrary. As described by Shakespeare in A Midsummer's Night's Train. From the 19th, from the 1590s, love looks not with the eyes but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste, and therefore is love said to be a child. Because in choice he is so oft beguiled. In Botticelli's Allegory of Spring, 1482, also known by its Italian title La Primavera, Cupid is shown blindfolded while shooting his arrow, positioned above the central figure of Venus. Particularly in ancient Roman art, cupids may also carry or be surrounded by fruits, animals, or attributes of the seasons or the wine god Dionysus, symbolizing the earth's generative capacity. Cupid carries two kinds of arrows, one with a sharp golden point and the other with a blunt tip of lead. A person wounded by the golden arrow is filled with uncontrollable desire, but the one struck by the lead feels aversion and desires only to flee. The use of these arrows is described by the Latin poet Ovid in the first book of his Metamorphosis. When Apollo taunts Cupid as the lesser archer, Cupid shoots him with the golden arrow, but strikes the object of his desire, the nymph Daphne, with the lead. Trapped by Apollo's unwanted advances, Daphne prays to her father, the river god Peneus, who turns her into a laurel, the tree sacred to Apollo. It is the first of several unsuccessful or tragic love affairs for Apollo. A variation is found in the Kingus Quer, a 15th century poem attributed to James I of Scotland, in which Cupid has three gold arrows. Gold for a gentle smiting that is easily cured, the more compelling silver and steel for a love wound that never heals.